I am now joined by John Rex, although he goes by Rex, the father of the two missing little girls. Rex, thank you so much for being with us today. I can't tell you what it means to us. Thank you for having me on. The raw emotion, uh, just even looking at you with that Christmas tree behind you, um, I have tissues near me and I'm gonna try to be professional, but this is one of those rare cases where it's impossible to not feel the emotion that you're feeling. The, the closest way that I can describe it is there's an old movie called Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. And my life is like Groundhog Day, but directed by Wes Craven, like a horror version of the same thing every single day. I wake up and I should be waking my daughters up to take them to, to go to school. Unfortunately, there's no kids to wake up, you know, um, and then it's like throughout the day, it's like, you know, when I'm when I'm making lunch or making dinner, it's like, well, there's no places being set for my daughters because I already know they're not going to be here for dinner. And then when I lay down at night and I'm going and I try to go to sleep, it takes me forever to go to sleep at night because all I keep thinking about when I'm laying down is where are my daughters laying down at? What kind of environment are they in right now? How are they being treated? Are they okay? Are they sick? Are they safe? And it's like, you know, it's just a daily, it, 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 it's, it's, it's literally a horror movie from start to finish every single day. You talk a lot about time, but you know something I've noticed about you. You don't talk about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You talk about 375 days, 376 days since my girls have been gone. That's how you view time now. The reason why is because I need my daughters to know that not a day went by that I didn't think of them. When Christmas came, they got gifts. They just weren't here to open them. I didn't miss it. I didn't miss a holiday. I didn't miss a Christmas. I didn't miss a birthday. I didn't miss an Easter. They got Easter baskets. They've got Christmas gifts. They even got Valentine's Day gifts. You know, they got every holiday, every birthday. They just got more stuff that's just been piling up, you know? And I want them to know that it wasn't like when they went missing, they were forgotten about. They're definitely not forgotten about. They'll never be forgotten about. And that's why I said, I'll continue doing everything that I can every day of my life to find my children. Tell us about Hannah and Skye. They are probably two of the sweetest, smartest, girls that I that you'll ever run into like you know and and, it, and it's funny they do have their differences in personalities um Hannah was at least as of two years ago um Hannah was more introverted whereas Sky was an extrovert you know so they have their differences um you know Hannah's much more I would say quiet than, than Sky is I need to ask you a really tough question because in order for somebody to hide children this long, it means they're not out there doing the normal things. They're not going to doctors. They're not being going to school. They're not around other people. How concerned are you for their safety? Over the past two years, while people have been dying of a global pandemic, my daughters haven't even been in to go see a doctor. That's concerning. Um, I, I am very concerned over their well-being at this point in time. Not to mention, you, you touched on another one, schools. There's no record of my daughters being in a formal educational program or being in a homeschooling program. And there's no doubt in my mind that their kidnapper is doing everything she possibly can right now to avoid being found um, by law enforcement. There's also no doubt in my mind that she has help. There's no way that somebody can take two kids and disappear for two years without having somebody to help her. What would you say to those people that are helping her? I don't know if I have a whole lot to say to anybody who is involved in the kidnapping of my children. Um, I will say this. I will do whatever it takes to find my children. I will never stop looking for my kids. I will work with whatever law enforcement agency I have to. I will work with whoever I have to, to ensure that anyone who had anything to do 
with my daughter's kidnapping is prosecuted. Why didn't they issue an Amber Alert? I mean, oh, I'm sorry. When you mention Amber Alert, those two words trigger me. Those two words are an absolute trigger for me because I called the state police when this first happened. And I'll never forget speaking to a corporal at the state police department and having this corporal tell me, well, we're not going to issue an Amber Alert because we know who the kidnapper is. The kidnapper is a parent. And you can't prove that your kids are in imminent danger. Your girls are seven and nine now. We know that that age group is very technologically advanced if they yes. have access still to their tablets. On the chance that they're seeing this right now, they have to be curious what happened to daddy. If they're able, if they're at that age where they can Google it and find this interview, send a message to your girls. What do you want to say to them? that I love you and I'm looking for you. I'm not gonna stop. I'll never give up. I'm here where you should be. I can't wait until the day that you come home. You got a bunch of presents to unwrap. We got a bunch of stuff that, you know, we gotta do, we haven't done in the past couple of years. Go to Disney, see the princesses, you know, go get those manicures and pedicures. I just wanna make sure that you girls are safe. I wanna make sure that you're home in an environment where you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to look over your shoulder. You don't have to worry about anything bad happening. I just, honestly, I love you girls and I want you home more than anything else in this world. Let's end on a positive note. Sky and Hannah are reunited with you and they are behind you opening up their gifts. Is that something that you dream of every night? Oh. God, yes. Oh my God, yes. I, you know, and not so much even them opening their gifts. Like, I know that's something that they're going to look forward to. I know that's something that's going to make them happy, you know, but honestly, all I look forward to is hearing the, their voice again. All I look forward to, to is feeling their hugs again. You know, um, it's so much more than the material things. It's, it, it, it's every aspect of having a child as a parent. And that's why I tell people all the time, you know what, hug your kids a little bit more today. <laughs> and uh, don't ever take a minute for granted because time is the one thing that we can never get back. I just missed the last two years of my daughter's life. I can't flip a switch and make them go back to five and seven when the kidnapping began. They're seven and nine now. And I just have to accept that there's a two year void. There's a two year period that is missing, you know? And I fully understand that even my youngest at seven is probably going to be a little bit too big now for shoulder rides. I used to put her up on my shoulder. We'd walk around at Disney park. You know, I used to put her up on the shoulder to watch the fireworks at night. There may be no more shoulder rides, you know? So I'm really looking forward to the day where my daughters come home and we can start doing those activities again. We can start doing those fun things again. We can start, you know, going to the park just to hear my daughters laugh, you know, just to see them smile. Like the little things that we just take for granted all the time are huge. You know, Rex, we go through the motions of everyday carpool, soccer practice, school, activities, dinner. And I think you have given us such a beautiful reminder not to take those things for granted. I know there's a lot of parents watching this right now. Their hearts and prayers go out to you and they're gonna hug their children a little tighter tonight. So thank you so much for sharing your story and being with us. And we're not gonna give up looking for Hannah and Sky. We really appreciate you being with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for covering my daughter's story. Thank you so much for helping to get their faces out there. And again, all I can ask people to do is just please, please, please make the phone call and help me save my daughters.